We have saved another Grand Tour car. It's just over there. And if you've watched the recent special, you'll probably have a good guess as to what it is. And just to let you guys know, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched the Grand Tour, go watch it now. Plot points and coming. Yes, Richard asked Amazon very nicely, and now we have the DB9 Volante from Sand Job. And it's actually quite well preserved, having come from Mauritania. It is still caked in that desert dust. I expected having been transported over here, I might have lost it and got loads of fingerprints and, you know, strapping and all that will have wiped it off. But it looks like it's just come off the boat from Mauritania. Let's go through all the damage that's been inflicted on this car over the special. Starting at the front, Richard quite quickly had to rip out these outlets here. They looked like they were from a V12 Vantage, but to get as much heat out of that engine bay, they had to go. We'll get to the engine in a bit and everything that went wrong there. Also at the front, you've got this white scuff here and then the smash on the windscreen. That was from Richard annihilating into a sort of barricade to not go into a minefield, of course. Heading back, not too bad here. But then you get to the rear of the car. So there's lots of studs and scrapes. So these ones in here, I think, were to attach the whole kind of tent thing, the Aston Martin Hotel, which has since gone. And then there's other divots further round that were for the pedalo system at the end of the special. This is by far the deepest damage in the car. The camping equipment off the back of the Aston got ripped off and it has gouged all the way from the rear wing here down the boot and then has properly scragged against the little ducktail at the back here. That is pretty rough. The smashed windscreen. That was, I think, a genuine surprising moment for Richard. He didn't see that coming. It's triggered. You can actually see it protruding through here. The car, it was having loads of electrical issues, but it seems to have thought it's rolled over or been in an accident and it's raised up that safety bar that most modern convertibles have and it's completely shattered the rear window. It's done it quite cleanly, to be fair. That's not too bad. And then one final thing, you have to kind of look through the dirt and other scuffs, but you can see big gouges along here from that Mercedes that just clouts into Richard. He cannot get through a Grand Tour Special without some sort of shunt, can he? One of the first cars I drove as a journalist was a DB9 back in my original blogging days. So a lot of this is very familiar and quite nostalgic really, but a lot of it is also pretty scary. The desert has gotten everywhere. The dashboard's caked, the seats, even in the little crevices. There's sand everywhere, all over the sills. The back seat's ruined as well. You could detail the hell out of this car. As ever, with Richard on the Grand Tour, he's left artifacts, just like they found in Martin. He always leaves shoes. It was crampons in Martin. Now it's these sort of slip-on sandly things. Should we do a giveaway? Why do you think Richard would want these back? I don't think we should sell the boss's shoes. This looks like, is this a pillowcase? It's covered in Mauritania. It is a pillowcase. So, this is an artifact from number one Aston Martin Street. Oh God, it's everywhere. There will be some authorities that this car would infuriate. Places like Australia, where you're not allowed any organic material moving from one country into another. It's a bloody desert ecosystem in here. Down below the seat, there's a switch. Can I bring this up? Yes, I can. <laughs> what do you think that does? Eject your seat out, cut! The seat is stuck in Richard's driving position, so my knees are completely rammed up against the dashboard. Let's have a look under the bonnet of this car, where all of Richard's trouble occurred on that special. Uh, I think the catch is down here. 
one of the most striking Mad Max mods where what the guys refer to as carbon fiber breasts on the front of the car. I would have called them nostrils, but hey ho. And they've been blanked off here and drilled up here because the air filters are directly underneath them. These k and jobs, one either side, they look pretty damn cool. I'll give Richard that. Again, lots of Mauritania in here. In actual fact, I'm gonna wipe away the beautiful Aston Martin badge, there you go. Final inspection by Paul Goddard. DB9 at AstonMartin.com. <laughs> Engines at AstonMartin.com. We might need to send an email to them. There it is, the six litre Aston Martin V12. It has to be one of the coolest GT car engines ever made. Naturally aspirated before they went twin turbo chars. And it is an enormous unit. It goes way back there. But it comes from that time before we got a bit too clever and had these things being kind of front mid engined half the engine underneath the dashboard. This thing is pretty much fully on show. It almost looks even cooler being as sandy as it is. Now there's different grades of sand. If you look at the front here, it's almost like clay and Richard explains that in the special. This is your power steering fluid reservoir here. That started leaking through the overheating and started gumming up all of this sand. He describes it as forming a brick wall along the heat exchangers. There'll be multiple of them down in there trying to cool the car. That is what will have really led to the overheating. Now, being a man who comes from MG Rover, overheating keeps me up at night. So when I see temperature gauges going up past the red time after time, I just think something's gonna go severely wrong. Some people are quite chill about it. It seemed on the show, this engine fully overheated, maybe three, four, five times. That would freak me out. But hopefully we can start this up and show just how robust these V12s are. One of the first videos I ever did on Drive Tribe was comparing the Aston Martin V12 to the Duratec Mondeo V6, because the rumor goes, as Clarkson put it, it's two Mondeo V6s welded together. Now there is more to it than that, but this Aston Martin V12 has the same pistons, con rods, valves, cam lobes, a whole load of parts in this engine will have the same part number as my V6 Mondeo. But then there are some V12 bits that simply have to happen, like camshafts, the crankshafts, and the block itself. What's quite nice is it multiplies up, actually more so than you'd expect. So assume you've got two Mondeo ST220 engines, you join them together, and then this is a 450 brake horsepower V12, so slightly more than you'd expect. Fair play to those k ns up front because they will have been putting a serious shift in to feed this engine nice, clean, cold air. It's all sand up to here, but actually if you look in the scuttle, it turns into small rocks. If I get in there, yeah, that is, that is rockage. The question now was, after countless desert miles overheating and temporarily becoming a boat, would this DB9 fire up first time? The one thing you have to remember with these Astons is it's kind of a hodgepodge of parts bins. The Aston Martin parts bin, the Ford parts bin, and the Volvo parts bin. The sat-nav screen comes out of a Volvo XC90. This is a Mondeo Ford Transit key. This car doesn't have the emotional control unit, so you are... Oof, that sprang into life there. Interesting, fan comes on automatically. Let's give it a go. Feel the brake. Oh! Say what you want about how old that engine is and its origins. My God, it's a good sounding thing. DSC service, trash control, temporary off, airbag service, urgent. Bonnet open, we know that one. Driver door open, yep. It's just cycling through every single issue. We've got a couple of warning lights. 
But we've got some fuel. Shall we give it a blip? Oh. Oh. Aston Martin. That is an engine. So we've checked out the exterior and the mechanicals of this Aston, but an unknown is what this car is like underneath. What we can see are these Baja spec tires and huge vented brakes behind them. But the wear that this car will have taken on, especially on that corrugated washboard surface, will have been enormous. The amount of physical miles that will have been added to the bushes, ball joints, all the suspension components by driving on that surface will have been brutal. People say doing a Nürburgring lap adds a certain amount of mileage to components. God knows how much of an impact that drive will have had on everything underneath. I reckon this car will need a proper going over once it's up on a ramp. At the end of the special, Richard said that he felt he had improved this Aston, saying that by putting all the stuff on it and taking it on that road trip, he'd kind of given this car a bit of a soul. He said that this DB9 beforehand probably just went from a house to some business park in the UK and back again, and then it would slowly be put out to pasture and traded in for maybe a DB11, maybe even a new Vantage. By making all of these modifications and taking it on that grand tour, he's given this car a proper story. But now we swing things over to you guys. What should we do with this car? Richard has said to me, make sure the audience gets their opinion in. So, comment down below. I see there being three options. One of them is that we completely restore this Aston back to being a perfect pristine road car and take it on road trips and stuff. Option number two is we go even further than this and turn it into some crazy Mad Max off-roader. Or number three, we preserve it as it is, maybe fix certain bits, get the cooling system going properly and make it drivable, but keep it Grand Tour spec. You could even do what Le Mans teams do, where they keep all the dirt on it and lacquer over it, so you preserve the condition that this car got back from Africa in. Anyway, Richard has genuinely left it up to you guys, so comment down below, out of those three options, which one we should go for. If you'd like to watch a video about another Grand Tour car we've saved, click here. And if you'd like to watch a video about our side project, our side quest on our second channel more Drive Tribe, click down there. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I've been Mike, and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe.